Hi friends, it's a great, great day today. This is Sunday of Easter where we remember the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is the moment we remember that I believe this moment where Jesus walked out of the grave, I believe is the greatest moment in human history. You see, Jesus died on the cross and then was in the grave for three days. And after three days did the unthinkable actually came out of death out of the grave and appeared before not just one or two or five people, but before hundreds of people. And then after 40 days ascended to heaven. This is the greatest moment in human history. I believe it's the greatest moment in human history because if Jesus doesn't rise from the dead, then you and I have reason to question everything he said and everything he said would be accomplished at the cross. If Jesus doesn't rise from the dead, we can question what he said about himself, that he was God, that he would seek and save that which is lost, that he would uh, draw all men to himself. That We have reason to question that. And then what he did at the cross, we have reason to question that. But guess what? Even majority of scholars accept that the tomb of Jesus was empty. The majority of reputable scholars, atheist, agnostic, all of them, majority of them, except that the tomb of Jesus of Nazareth was empty. That's extraordinary. You see, I believe it's the greatest moment in human history because Jesus rose from the grave making sure that we didn't have to be left dead in the tomb of our sins, the tomb of our past mistakes. But he rose from the grave with a, in his case, a a new uh, glorified body representing for us the fact that we could have a new hope, a new future, a new life, a new heart, forgiven, set free and justified. It was the greatest moment in human history. But did you know that Jesus in that glorified body was actually seen by hundreds of people. It's recorded, reliably recorded that Jesus was actually seen by the group known as the 12, which was made up of his own disciples. He was then seen by over 500 brothers at one time. That's they didn't In those days, they weren't counting the women and the children, so it could have been more than 500 there. And he was seen by James. He was seen by the apostles and he was seen by Paul. Jesus was seen by hundreds of people in this new body after being in the tomb for three days. There were there are eyewitness accounts of people who said, I saw the Son of God. I saw Jesus of Nazareth who died on the cross. I saw him with my own eyes. That's extraordinary. This is a historical event. But you know what's most important is that you look at what Jesus did for humanity in that moment. Not just the fact that he did an awesome miracle, but what why did he do that? What did he accomplish? Why was he done? Why was he uh, with the the empowerment of the Holy Spirit and the Father's intervention? Why was he coming back from the, the dead? Well, this the thing that he was making a way for us is that we would not be left dead in our mistakes. We would not be left dead in our past failures. He was dealing with the problem of sin, getting that separation between us and God out of the way, restoring intimate relationships relationship with us and the Father, and He was bringing us back to the purpose He had in mind for us from the beginning, that we would be His image bearers on the earth, His priests on the earth, that we would represent Him in the earth to all creation, that we would walk with Him, that we would serve Him, that we would be His priests, His royal priests, His sons and daughters, His heirs on the earth, heirs of Him on the earth and for eternity. You see, if Jesus doesn't come out of that grave, you and I have no eternal life. It's over for us when we die. If we, if Jesus doesn't come out of the grave, it's over for us when we die. Over, over. Who knows what happens? Maybe just blackness, nothingness, maybe even eternal punishment. We have It's over for us, no matter what. It, it, it is life in just absolute awful, ex- some kind of probable awful existence, what we know as hell. The reality is, is that Jesus died so that we could have unbroken intimate relationship and resume the purposes that he had from us, for us from the beginning. And you see, if Jesus... 
Jesus doesn't rise from the dead, then we have absolutely no real, genuine, authentic faith in a God of the universe. Our faith is meaningless. Me turning over my life to God it means nothing. I still remember the moment when I was 14 years old and there was a moment in a large meeting where someone preached and spoke a message a little bit like what I'm sharing today, talking about why Jesus died for me, the love that he had for me, the plans that he had for me, the sacrifice that he made to bring me back to himself. Someone shared that on a microphone when I was 14 years old. I raised my hand and said, I want to give my life to Jesus. I'm making a personal decision to give my life to Jesus. Friends, we, we love to watch movies. Movies even speak of this supernatural event in illustrative ways, in symbolic ways. You might, you might remember the Lord of the Rings uh, obviously starts with the books but becomes movies. You might remember the Lord of the Rings, Gandalf the wizard fighting the great demon of the underworld and then uh, the demon of the underworld drags Gandalf down to the depths into the abyss but Gandalf miraculously overcomes the demon and actually we think he's dead but after some time and in the second book in the second film Gandalf the Grey comes back from the abyss, back from uh, the depths, comes back and he's Gandalf the White and he's almost unrecognizable. This is almost a, a type of Jesus in the sense of it's symbolic of Jesus. It's a, it's a picture of, of Jesus. Gandalf came back from the abyss. Jesus came back from death. Jesus became glorified, ascended to the right hand of God. He defeated the powers of death and hell. He made a way for you and I to have a new life, to have a new hope, to be forgiven, to have a future. That's what Jesus did for us. And I want to tell you, friend, he shows you great mercy today. He does it. He's not, he's not sitting up in heaven absolutely full of anger and displeasure over you. He loves you. He says, I want to show you mercy. I want to bring you to myself. I don't care what you've done. It's nothing compared to what my son's done. What my son has done is far greater than anything you've done in your life. I want to bring you back to myself. So my friend, if you just decide to dedicate your life to God, as I did when I was 14 years old, he can give you a new hope and a new future. I promise you, come to Jesus. He's merciful. He wants to give you a new heart, forgive you of your sin, give you a brand new start, and give you a new purpose and a new future with and for him. I hope that encourages you on this Resurrection Sunday. Christ is alive. He's alive today. He wants to meet with you and speak to you. I pray that that encourages you. Come to him today. God bless you.